I am so happy to be a priest. Every single day that I wake up, I know that life is going to be different. I know that it's going to be exciting. We're just always moving. We're always on the go. Our life is very dynamic. There's so many different things going on. Part of what makes our life so joy-filled is the fact that we're doing what our Lord Jesus Christ did. Our Lord was always moving. We see our Lord in the gospel always doing great work. That is what the priest does. The diocesan priesthood is so unique because every day is different. There is not one day that is exactly the same. You can have a tremendous day walking with people in the high points of their life to walking with people to the lowest points of their life. My life as a priest has been an adventure. There are so many joyful moments, so many really challenging moments. One day, you have a, a, a tragic funeral. The next day, you're celebrating a wedding of a beautiful couple giving themselves to each other in holy matrimony. Even though I was successful as a teacher, and I had my degrees, and I was offered tenure to stay, which is permanent positionship, I turned it down to become a priest. I did it because I felt God wanted me to do more. I felt I could do more. And that doing more was walking with people in the sacraments of the church, walking with people through the sacraments of life. The sacraments are absolutely at the core of our lives as Catholics. And to be a priest and to be able to be at the center of that is the greatest gift you could ever receive. It's incredible. Sacraments are the way in which God desires to accompany us in this life. And as a priest, I am able to bring people closer to God because of my participation in those sacraments. To be able to bring God to man through the sacraments of the Eucharist. And you are the key figure in that. You're there to transmit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to this person through the power of the sacraments. This is not something that anyone else, any other calling in life, is capable of doing. Only the priest. There's nothing too great for God's forgiveness, and that happens through the priest. So from a priest's perspective, you're sitting there in the confessional, you're just in awe of what, first of all, people entrust to you because they know that through you, they're talking to God. This awesome mystery that's going on, and God, for whatever reason, has allowed me to have this intimate part in this mystery here. And so when you hear yourself saying those words, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's just incredible. Standing over someone's bed as they are dying or preparing a couple as they're beginning this journey together of marriage, there's nothing quite like that. And you can look at books and movies and see all sorts of things about the priesthood. But unless you really experience it, then you wouldn't really know what it's all about. We all want a meaning in life. We all want a direction in life. A lot of times uh, we're trying to find heroes to follow. In my life, my great heroes were the priests. Seeing them do all these amazing things and my meaning in life, my direction in life then, was found through that. That inspiration guided me to say, I want to be part of this. I want to live this. The life of the diocesan priest is very interesting. It's, uh, you might say, eclectic. There's a little bit of everything involved, right? So whereas we know that Franciscan priests have a, a special ministry of serving the poor, where Dominican priests have a special ministry of, of study and teaching, we diocesan priests, we really have a little of, of all of that. So in a parish, you're going to encounter opportunities to teach, not only just through your preaching, but, but also if you have a school or a local high school. I am actually in the history classes teaching how when history unfolds, the Catholic Church also is working at the same time. So we're doing U.S. history right now and speaking of the beginnings of the church in the United States while the colonies are being formed at the same time. You might have a food pantry, you might have homeless outreach uh, for your community, you might have any number of ways that, that you're serving the poor. There's so much to the life of the diocesan priest, so it's an exciting one. There's many times where I find myself in awe of what I'm doing, where I'm taken aback that I'm saying these words and performing these actions because I know that my own shortcomings 
are what they are. And I know that I am a man like any other man, but God in his remarkable grace can take what is broken in this world and he can transform them for his good. He calls us in our humanity. He calls us as who we are with our strengths and our talents, and he uses us for great things. I always had that sense that maybe God was calling me to become a priest. For a while I thought maybe I'd like to be a doctor, maybe I'd like to be a teacher or a lawyer, uh, but ultimately God brought me back to, to the idea of the priesthood. He showed me that's how I'm going to find the purpose of my life. That's what he's created me for. God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the call. When I entered the seminary, it wasn't something that immediately that means I'm going to become a priest. I've had people tell me, oh, so do you just enter the seminary, say, I love Jesus, I want to be a priest, and they ordain you on the spot? Absolutely not. When you enter, they talk to you. But it's very much a process. The term is discernment, figuring it out, seeing if this is for me. I chose to take some time to discern, and discernment really means not, you know, focusing on only things of the priesthood and locking everything out. It's the complete opposite. It's doing everything in the world, living in the world, and realizing that that part of the world does not fulfill you the way the priesthood could. After you're in the seminary, learn, witness the work of the priests. We went on what are called pastoral assignments. I went, helped out in nursing homes, helped out um, in schools, helped out serving the poor in soup kitchens, and all these different works to try to see, is this really what I want to do? So when you enter the seminary, you are making one step towards the commitment. God often speaks in, in silence, and that's difficult for us now, especially for young people, because there's so much noise in our world. There's so many voices out there. Just do whatever you want, whenever you want, with whomever you want, whatever makes you feel good, that therefore is good and true. We know that's, that's not true. As Catholics, we know that there is objective truth, and that's God himself, and, and he wants to speak to us. But the mystery of, of his relationship with us is that so often he speaks to us in the silence. And so uh, I just would encourage, especially our young people, really try to spend some time in quiet prayer, asking God to enter into your heart, to speak to you, and to give you courage and to give you the grace to follow his will. It'll bring you the greatest joy you could ever know. I never understood the magnitude of my priesthood until I got up off the floor of St. Patrick's Cathedral and said, wow, the Lord has chosen me to do something absolutely beyond my control. And if that intrigues you in any way, don't let that die because you don't understand it. The calling to priesthood is a super gift. God's gift to you is to be his instrument. The way he used every saint in our history as his gift. He's choosing you to be his instrument of mercy in the confessional, to be his conduit of the Lord's love and grace in the Eucharist, to bring joy to families and baptisms and weddings, to be a source of consolation and reconciliation and in funerals and in anointings, and to just be present and to show people that God loves them through your own daily life. The priesthood is the highest of callings that a, a man could have. To be a priest, to be another Christ, to serve our Lord in this unique way to be marked for eternity, to receive that power from on high, to celebrate the sacraments. This is not just another calling of, I want to help people. There's a lot of people that help people. This is not just a calling of, I want to um, heal the sick or whatever. Doctors could heal the sick. Social workers could help people. Therapists could do all of those different things. Only the priest is another Christ and serves the people of God as Christ did through the power of the sacraments. And if you want to have that supernatural calling, because doctors, nurses, lawyers, all of these are natural callings. If you want to have a supernatural calling, that's being a priest. Please pray for your priests. Pray for more priests. And if you've ever considered, even for a moment, that God might be calling you to serve him and his church as a priest, visit nypriest.com to learn more. Call the vocations office to talk to a priest. God is calling you not just to do something great, 
but to take part in something supernatural. Follow him and his plan for your life and discover the joy of the priesthood.